Oh my god, y'all, Ashton Kutcher is so much worse than we realized. I had no idea until yesterday. Just, okay, I'm going to tie a lot of things together here. First of all, this comment, didn't know that. A man who, like, runs, like, a anti, like, Schmegs trafficking, which, again, I don't even trust that because anytime there's not Schmegs workers at the center of that conversation, I don't care. Some Hollywood bro. I don't care what his opinions are on this or his activism because it's probably not informed, especially if this. Look at this coming. Um defending the dude who is a part of that whole Penn State um, Schmegs abuse. Like, oh, God. But it gets worse. Okay. He also criticized the whole Chris Rock, Will Smith thing. And if there's one thing that white people really need to learn how to do is stay out of black people's business, right? The fact that he made a point to like, man, man, man. Dude, shut up. He also, let me get to what he did to Serena Williams, okay? I'm going to save that for last because I will never forgive him for this. <clears throat> but let's get back to another awful thing that was exposed yesterday. This is the letter he wrote on behalf of his um, serial rapist friend. And again, for anyone who needs a reminder, it is so hard to get a, a grape conviction. And even when you are convicted to get any kind of um, real punishment, we all know Brock Turner case. We all know how it goes. I personally had to recant my um, accusations of rape to the police because they made it very unsafe for me, right? So we know that, that rapists never get convicted. I mean, almost never. The fact this man had got 30 years is such a big deal. And he had Scientology on his side, all of that power, and he still lost. And when you go and read the accounts, I don't suggest doing it before bedtime like I did last night. Terrible idea. The dude, like this whole letter, he's like, oh my God, he's thought he saved me from being a drug addict, which is also, by the way, and I said in my last video, Ashton is the one who encouraged Demi Moore to go back to drinking after being like 20 years sober or something. And it ruined her life for a bit. And she lost her relationship with her kids because he didn't believe in addiction. So how dare him say, oh my God, this man's such a good man. He's a good father. Nah, 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 nah. Because he kept me, you know, he, he really helps people keep from being addict. I thought you didn't believe in that dude. But look how long this is. Oh, look, my dog's in it. <laughs> and then um, his wife's is even longer. Now, you know what? She is just as guilty of all this nonsense. She's been supporting this rapist and her husband, who I think is actually a predator as well, um, this whole time. But you know what? The fact that they met when she was like 15 or 14, I don't even know, a little teenager when he was a grown man. This is what happened. Do y'all remember the dude in California who had a whole house of kids that he terrorized and tortured? Him and his wife, that wife of his that also tortured those kids, he married her when she was 16 and he was 30-something. They tend to leave those parts out. That doesn't mean that the wife isn't complicit in these crimes. But what I am saying, I believe she was groomed and is now in his little under his spell. Doesn't mean that she's innocent, but the fact that this man targets really um, women with trauma like Demi and Brittany and, and then women before that. And then she was a teenager. This man is so problematic. It only gets worse. I'm not even going to go through their, their stupid letter. It's ridiculous. Oh, and if you're writing letters with members of Scientology and Billy Baldwin to and all of this to defend a serial rapist who like, you know, drugged women, and then violently did those things to them? How can you think you're on the right side? Now I want to go back to what y'all reminded me of. I never watched this show because I thought the premise of it was really stupid. Punked. Y'all remember Punk? If you don't, good for you. You missed out on one of the worst periods of time in TV that I remember in my life lifetime. Is when, you know, like the whole girl's gone wild and punked and all of this stuff. We're all bros, these misogynistic bros. Oh, like, oh, jackass. This is where a bunch of grown men go around and prank each other and torture each other and do all kinds of crazy stuff to their own bodies um, for fun. Because y'all know how I feel about jokes and prank, especially when they come from men. They are never funny when it, because they, okay, not never, but most of the time they're not funny because they involve humiliating someone. And when it comes to women, it's usually about degrading them, bringing them down a peg, humiliating them, or, and or, triggering their trauma responses. So this douche created a show that preyed on other celebrities for our entertainment to trigger their trauma responses. 
And the dude didn't even know what he was doing. He apparently got really close to like some major legal trouble and was like, maybe I should take the advice of like a lawyer. He even admitted that like they weren't even sure if what they were doing was legal. Because here's the other thing, filming people without their consent was apparently like there was some, it, it wasn't clear of like how legal that was or was it. You know, another thing, by the way, and I want to talk about this, in France, you're not allowed to do that. You can't, which is why you don't see children all over the internet. It is illegal to post stuff about people without their consent because it's a protect right to privacy. Anyway, listen, he pranked. I'm so glad I didn't see this episode. I can't believe that we haven't talked about this more, or maybe people have, I haven't heard. Pranked Serena Williams, but because he's dead inside and doesn't understand that Serena Williams is an unbelievable person in, I mean, I don't know her raw. I know they're stars. We don't know people. But she seems to be a woman who lives with a lot of integrity and is, has always inspired me and is an amazing role model. And when put in a position where they punked her uh, in 2005, she was parked in a strip mall when she saw what she thought was a, a teen abducting two, get, two kids. Now, Ashton Kutcher and his D-bag friend who created this stupid show underestimated the moral compass and the humanity of this woman, because if they were put in that position, they would have never done this because they're cowards and seemingly terrible people. So she believed this joke. How you think having someone pretend to abduct kids is a joke? Like, if this man runs a, an organization to protect children of Shangsha, okay, it's all a cover, y'all. This dude's terrible. Who even thought of this premise? Anyway, so long story so short, she chases after them to save these kids and gets in a hundred mile an hour chase trying to save these kids. And they ended up editing the episode because they didn't want people to realize just how dangerous this was. She risked her life. She put herself in danger to try to save these kids. And it was all a joke. And they're speeding through Los Angeles doing this. I don't have time to go into all the details because uh, there's even more, y'all. But basically, these D-bags thought of like funny premises and then put people in danger. They, they decided to punk a black woman, one of the greatest athletes of all time, but, and assumed that she wouldn't care about teenage kids being abducted. And so then she, she could have died, y'all. Between that and the, 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 the racism in her, during her childbirth, like uh, I'm sure there's a million other examples of the way she has been treated. But this was just jokes and then look at this like the lawyer for them was like you know we basically made them all sign uh, uh, waivers or whatever because they just assume no one's gonna no celebrity is gonna sue mtv um they also um apparently zach braff also also sucks if i understand but they punked him and he almost beat someone to death like the teenager that was punking him had to go and hide and ask for help from a security guard who he then hit one of the people got a gun pulled on them during a prank because this is the thing, y'all. You're messing with people's lives and their sense of security. All for a joke. Oh, Hillary Duff got a, a gun pulled on her during a prank. During another prank, they put another actor in danger and they made them do stunts they weren't prepared for. And these two douches were controlling all of it, making all the calls. Call, calls on people's lives, y'all. And then that brings me to one another one. They thought it'd be funny to punk someone serving teenage girls alcohol to basically seduce them. Y'all, this dude is a predator, y'all. Also, do you think he married Demi Moore for her or to have access to her kids? Just putting it out there. That's what a lot of stepfathers do. Anyway, Jonah Hill, you know our buddy Jonah, the emotionally abusive dude? Remember him? The guy who is so insecure, he takes his beautiful surfing girlfriend and then takes up surfing to try to be better than her and then makes her quit and then makes her dress like him. Like this dude is so sick. All of these dudes, they are all, this whole entourage, I think they're all a bunch of abusive dudes because you are the company you keep. And him and his old friend Justin did a prank where they, you know, trying to pick up and serve teenage girls alcohol. Oh, and just, just go Google this story. It's sick. And his roommate from CS, grape it. Stop trusting nice guys, y'all.